My name is Nick Monning, field agronomist in East Central Missouri, and today I want to talk with you a little bit about fallow corn syndrome. With all the prevent plant corn acres we have out there in the state this year and all the flooded acres, I thought it was a really good topic to talk about, uh, especially the fact that we had all the prevent plant acres in 2015 that led to a lot of fallow corn syndrome in 2016. So we've seen a little bit of it the last few years. So I guess the first thing is, what is fallow corn syndrome? So fallow corn syndrome is caused when you don't have a crop growing the year before, you plant corn into that bare ground or that fallow ground, and there's a reduction in a mycorrhiza population that makes phosphorus, zinc, uh, copper more available to that plant. That mycorrhiza population we call VAM for short. So let's say we were growing a corn crop in 2020 after a field that was fallow or prevent plant in 2019, we could see a reduction in that growth and stunning just from that fallow corn syndrome. So it'll appear as a phosphorus deficiency or zinc deficiency. So the biggest things to remember with fallow corn syndrome is that once you see it, it's too late. There's nothing you can do about it. There's no rescue treatment for fallow corn syndrome. And we saw that in 16. A lot of fields that were showing fallow corn syndrome, people wanted to do something about it, but there really is no treatment. So my point being based off experience in 16, be proactive to start with. You don't want to see it because once you do there's nothing left that you can you can do about it the other thing just important thing to remember is there's weeds are not a good host you'll see some articles online that talks about if you let the field grow up into weeds that potentially you won't have a problem in the next year what we saw in 16 is that weeds were not a very good host for that vam fungi and if you let those weeds grow, it's just not the same thing as say having 140,000 or 100,000 soybean plants out there. It just does not equal the same thing. So weeds are not a good host. Another big point to remember though, cover crops can definitely help. So remember though, that there are certain species of cover crops that will help and some certain species that won't help. So things in the Nebraska family like radishes will not help. Those actually inhibit that mycorrhiza population. So you don't want to plant those. But things like oats are a very, very good host for VAM, and they will help out a lot. Plus, they win or kill, so they're pretty easy to manage. And in some situations now, that soybeans can even be used in those prevent plant acres or those flooded acres, so that's something else to remember or to ask your crop insurance about. Another thing just experienced from 16 is that clean tillage to keep weeds controlled all summer long. That was a bad recipe for fallow corn syndrome. So if we kept those weeds all tilled up all summer long, in 2015, we planted corn in 16. That was some of the worst fallow corn syndrome that we saw. So clean till, not a good idea, but makes those cover crops look a little bit more attractive. And then when it comes to another thing to remember, just because you have good soil P levels, like maybe you maintain 25 parts per million, that doesn't fix the problem. That doesn't overcome fallow corn syndrome. So the only places we really saw a difference in, in corn with fallow corn or versus not with fallow corn in 2016 is where we had phosphorus levels say from old feedlots that were in the hundreds parts per million otherwise it is pretty hard to overcome that fallow corn syndrome with just high soil P levels the last thing to remember is that starter phosphorus can definitely help but you do have to run quite a bit of it a lot of studies say 60 to 80 pounds an acre which is a lot of starter phosphorus to overcome fallow corn syndrome which kind of leads you back to that cover crop using some of those different species or even utilizing soybeans can definitely help overcome that fallow corn. Thank you very much for listening. Thanks for your business. And hopefully you can find a few helpful tidbits to avoid fallow corn syndrome in 2020. That concludes this Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.